Welcome to chapter 3, No One to Tell. The discord from home was a catalyst to my imbalance. I decided to put my things on the porch at 16 and leave my mother's home for good. The tug of war we went through daily before that was something I just couldn't withstand anymore. I know mommy was not mean intentionally, which just kind of made things worse. I was just a little scared kid, unsure of who to trust. My generation and hers was separated by so much time and too many differences. It was like because I was a child, I did not have a right to have opinion or feelings, which surely was not the case. Spare the ride and spoil the child was all I heard as a youth. Now I look back and I still wonder how did a whole country forget to go back and help the children like me that were overlooked when the laws changed, giving children a fight against different forms of what is now considered flat-out abuse. Severe discipline being pushed by that Bible verse was a link that made me believe if someone hits you, they love you. Before I had actually left mommy house, I had continued drinking liquor and smoking marijuana to cope with the many ups and downs of my life. Mommy heard rumors here and there and searched my room one day and she found this empty bottles of liquor and the insides of cigars, um, which finally put the rumors, kind of laid them in concrete. She couldn't believe it. She was upset. I didn't even know she knew until people started saying that mom was telling them that I was smoking crack. Mommy's generation in the 1900s, let's not forget God, mm -hmm. she was born in 1914. Her generation was not introduced to those type of drugs, and if she was introduced to them, she never mentioned it. Anything she heard about was completely news to her. So she called everything crack. I would get so mad at her because, I mean, to be thought of as a crackhead was not something that I really wanted. I tried my best to correct her every time, but she stood firm on how she saw it. Soon, I was looking for a boyfriend to conquer what I now know were daddy issues. I met this older guy, and it didn't take long for me to kind of fall for him. He was super controlling and super jealous, but I believed he loved me. The attention he gave me was something I really never had. I abandoned all my friends. All my family, any connections I had outside of him, I quickly dissolved them. His family became my family, and his friends became my friends. I have to admit, I did lie. I lied about my age to him and his mother, trying to ensure that my escape from home would definitely have a chance to work. I did not want to go back home to my mother. My boyfriend's mom and I had this connection that I really needed the whole time, even before I met them. I never really felt genuinely loved at home. She was open with me where my mom wasn't. I mean, I told her about how I was treated at home eventually, and I had really never done that with anyone before. Don't get me wrong, my boyfriend was super upset that I had lied to him. And so was his mother. But um, after pleading and apologizing, I was eventually forgiven and eventually moved in. Time went on, I was starting to get warnings from his mother about her son. Soon as Flat out abuse just took front stage. But I was hard headed and deep in love. 
I clearly had learned the pattern of accepting these types of circumstances from home and had settled right back into the same scenario I had clearly ran from. No matter how someone treats you, Michelle, they love you. I can remember so vividly mommy beating me with whatever she could get her hands on and saying I'm beating you because I love you. I mean, I got in trouble with what child doesn't or hasn't. I mean, I really was not a bad child. A misfortunate event had turned my life upside down and no one knew about it or what it was really doing to me. I never even understood at this age, like the pressure that everyone was placing on me to be normal would never even happen. The fact that I was holding a secret about being raped made me believe I could just go on and never address it, no harm done. I mean, I didn't die, I was okay. By the time I left home, I was at rock bottom. I mean, before actually walking out of the door into my boyfriend's life, I had made a huge mistake of sleeping with a married man. I was 14 years old and in the 11th grade when this happened, I was so naive. I wrote a letter to my cousin explaining what I had done and my mom found it while I was at school. That day my mom found out, as I was coming home on the school bus, he was walking out of my mom's house. I was mortified. I had let this man do this to me and I could not undo it for anything in this world. It was a dare that I took to the extreme. The bus stopped, I get off, he glanced at me and goes right on down the hill like nothing happened. That totally baffled me. I was like, well, what did mommy do? There were no police officers. I was so embarrassed, honestly. I, I, I never occasions of what we had really done. These men gave me this attention that I've never got at home. And I don't really think I really understand, understood that attention. I was so unprotected. Just a target to these people. I wonder now, was it because everyone knew I was adopted and I really didn't have anyone that was truly capable of looking out for me? The more I reveal in this story, the more I know I am going to have to work on forgiving each one of these people, dead and alive. They all play dominantly negative impacts on my entire life. I never even considered how wrong it was in the beginning. He always asked me to be quiet, and when I started getting gifts, that made me withdraw. I knew it was wrong. I think I wrote that letter in hoping that someone would expose and fix this ugly situation I was deep inside of. It's like the birth of me just upset this whole entire freaking universe. I think I thought if my cousin found out, she would get me help. But the letter, the, the letter never made it to her. And mommy blamed me. When mommy took his side and was mad at me and me alone, that broke me. Me heartless. Somewhere in my childhood, something went very wrong, but no one knew what. Because I stayed quiet. I had messed up so bad and so much. Revealing the root of my evil, which was that rape, would have done nothing but give my family more ammunition to use against me, and I wasn't having that. I know knew I know people knew about the sex. But I was never looked at as a victim or a child. I still to this day will never understand this. I now know I was wrong for not speaking up against what hurt me and also wrong for accepting the situations. I also know my environment offered me no options, so I was stuck. I remember the day my uncle signed me out of school. 
after my second attempt at the 11th grade, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't face myself at school, and I couldn't face anyone else. Everyone knew. Everyone was talking. Everyone was looking at me out the side of their eye. It was too much for me to handle. I drank more and more and more to numb myself and to sink deeper and deeper into this abyss. Into this lie of me being older. Now I'm living with this older man who was clearly clueless as to what was really going on with me. Chapter 4 Throughout the next four years, I subjected myself to abuse, including being shot at by my boyfriend in a hotel room on my 18th birthday. That was the first time I had ever been shot at. He emptied a Ruger 9mm with hollow points at my feet and demanded that I dance. I danced. Today I have ten toes, so I have proof that I danced. He would choke me and kick me with steel toe boots. He would verbally abuse me at times. Um, it got so bad that I got pregnant and I lost my first child to one of those brutal kicks. I was told I would never carry a baby in my womb due to, due to the damage that I sustained. I never understood why that happened. I never fought for myself. I felt I deserved whatever came my way and I accepted everything. Circumstances soon led him to be charged for crimes that I was unaware of. I was harassed by task forces to testify against him. They believed that I would have been a good candidate to ensure charges stuck on him. My mother and I were not trying to be cooperative. She wanted me out of the equation and I wanted out as well. Him and I were together almost four years until I turned 19. My mother, by this time, had let me come back home as the abuse had escalated to the point of no return. I was stalked. I couldn't go to friends' houses. I could lay on a couch with all the lights off in a friend's apartment and see red beams on the wall and his silhouette calling my name, trying to force me out of wherever I was. I was safe nowhere. I was even scared to go home. Mommy tried to accommodate me the best she could. She brought me an old school classic, a 68 Buick. And I tried to go back to school at the community college to continue my education. I won't sit here and tell you that I gave my all because I didn't. My alcohol abuse was at an all-time high. This is the year I was told to literally stop drinking by a doctor. You could walk past me and smell gin coming out of the pores of my skin. I was killing myself. So, mommy called on a lifeline. Someone I always looked up to. She was older and a close friend of our family. And we're going to just call her... Ivory. Mommy felt a change of scenery would be great for me, and I kind of agreed. Ivory was willing to come get me and move me out of state. She promised Mommy she would look out for me forever. The fact that Mommy was now in her late 70s, everyone knew I was way too much for her. I was so happy to be where I could do what I wanted to do, even though mommy thought she was doing the right thing. I had escaped the grips of death in North Carolina. 
I had been to jail, shot at by a friend that had turned enemy, and even in a tr love triangle, all after being raped. I had ended my college path in someone's marriage. Mommy had made attempts to get me therapy, but she was not consistent. She did not want to be bothered with all of that, that I really needed to face. I think she was hurt and overwhelmed because I really dug deep. It seems like when I jumped, I jumped high as I could into the wrong direction. I had grown resentful a little bit, knowing what I had been through and not being able to go to her to get help. Mommy never told mental health that I wanted the treatment, and she refused to take me. So I went down in the records as a juvenile runaway, non-compliant to her mother at 16. No record of any, any abuse at home or anywhere. I was just a whole mess. I was never offered mental health, and I never even thought to seek it myself. No one ever acted on my signs I clearly gave off or even thought I needed help. I was just looked at as a bad seed that ran away ungrateful.